Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In the last episode, I talked all about how you can style and check the style of your code using two R packages, linter and style R. We also talked about how we can use GitHub actions so that when we push our code up to GitHub, um, that these actions <laughs> on GitHub um, will run linter and style R on our code to make sure that uh, it's nicely formatted. Now you might be thinking like, well, why do I have to push it to test that out, right? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to do that locally? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do in today's episode. So to do it locally, we'll use what's called a pre-commit hook. So a pre-commit hook, what is that? That sounds kind of funny. Well, a commit is involving version control, right? And so we have version control that we're running with our package to keep track of the different versions. So before you can then um, incorporate your changes into your repository, you need to commit it, right? And so we've been talking about that as we've been going along developing uh, this phylotyper package that I'm developing. And so once you've committed it, it's in the repository and then you can push it up to GitHub, right? Well, it would be nice to check the style before we actually commit it. So pre-commit, I want to check that my code is properly styled. A pre-commit hook then is something that happens as you're going through the committing process. It's, a, it's an approach that can be used with Git so that when you commit it, it runs other code before it actually does the committing. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. And so as this great meme illustrates, you know, in an ideal world, um, I will always remember to do things well. I'll always remember to code <laughs> in a nice style. I wouldn't even need something lint like Linter, right? Alternatively, I, of course, I can also use tools like Linter and Stylar. Um, and so then in the second bubble here, we can use continuous integration to notice the wrong stuff, right? So we could push it up and we can notice the problems, which is what we did in the last episode. But in a brilliant world where I don't have to think at all, I can use a pre-commit hook uh, so that without even having to think about it, um, it the, the commit will tell me if there's a problem. So we talked about styling in the linter. What other types of things might I want to be able to check with a pre-commit hook? Well, there's a couple things that come immediately to mind, mainly because I'm guilty of forgetting these myself. So thinking about your readme.rmd file, we have a readme file in our repository uh, that is also used as part of our package down site. And I frequently forget to render that to a markdown file. Well, I could have a pre-commit hook say, hey, Pat, you modified this RMD file, but its changes are newer than any of the changes to the markdown file. I think you mean to go ahead and re-render that file. Yes, of course I do. Um, another thing would be I might modify some of the documentation in my functions, uh, but forget to actually update the documentation that goes along with the package. And so again, uh, pre-commit hooks are available to test that. Um, something else that might come to mind would be say running a spell check on your documentation to make sure you don't have any uh, pesky typos. I know I have a few in there, at least I think I do. So something else I remember from earlier in developing this package was forgetting to put the dependencies into my description file. Uh, and so we could have a pre-commit hook to look to see that if I'm using a package in my code that I don't have flagged as a dependency, and then also making sure that those dependencies are nicely formatted in that description file. So these are just a handful of things that we might think about wanting our, our version control to check for us before we actually go ahead and commit our changes to the repository. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to use a handy R package that I just learned about called pre-commit. Um, I'm gonna learn to use it along with you. I've never used it on my own code. And so we'll head over to our studio and get working on that today. So I have our studio opened here in my phylotyper project root directory, which you can also see here in the bottom right corner. So this is the pre-commit web page. I have it zoomed in a little bit, so it's easier to see. But if I kind of zoom out, this looks more like what you would expect a package down website to look like. I'll go ahead again and zoom in. Again, you see uh, the meme that I showed you earlier from uh, Mara Averick. Um, and there's a lot of great documentation, including a uh, talk that the developer whose name I'm spacing on, um, I'll find it later, um, gave on use R. It's a little bit grainy, so it's kind of hard to see the syntax, but um, there's other information out there. We'll come back up here to the top to do get started. So the first thing that we'll do is go ahead over to our studio to install the pre-commit package. I'll do it here from the command line. 
So I'll do install packages uh, pre-commit. That very quickly uh, installs the pre-commit package. The next thing that we need to do is install the pre-commit Python helper. Uh, there's two approaches to this, one using pip3. If you're on a Windows or Linux computer, this is the approach you're gonna need to take. If you're on a Mac, then you can use brew. Um, I have a Mac and I use brew for other things. Um, installing pip3 and brew are kind of a separate story. I'd encourage you to uh, Google around for how to install these tools for your system. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and use brew. So I'll go ahead and copy uh, this syntax, brew install pre-commit. And then I will come back to our studio, go to tools, get a new terminal here, and then go ahead and paste in the command. Very good, that completed installing. Uh, my installation took a few minutes because I had a number of things in brew that needed to be updated. Uh, you may or may not have to do those depending on where you are with installing brew. Again, if you're using pip or pip3, you're gonna get different syntax as well. But now the key is that we have pre-commit installed, I think. <laughs> so if we do pre-commit hyphen hyphen uh, version, we see that we do in fact have pre-commit 3.8.0. Uh, if I do which pre-commit, I see that it is in my homebrew bin directory. So that's all good. So what we now need to do is restart our studio to make sure everything works. I'll go ahead and close this out and then fire back up our studio by double clicking on that rproj file. We now have our studio relaunched right back into our project root directory. The first command that we're told to use is to use pre-commit the package colon colon use pre-commit. We'll do something like this. So over here then we'll do pre-commit colon colon use pre-commit. And here I'm gonna give it an argument which will be CI for continuous integration. And then in quotes, I'll put GHA, which is for GitHub action. Go ahead and run that. All right, so that ran and generated some output. Let's read through the output. Uh, so it, let's see, it's using a local config file that came with the package itself and it copied it into my filer typer directory. I see it up here. I see it over here in my version control, but I don't see it over here in the actual directory. If I then do ls-a, so the dash a will show you the hidden files that start with periods. Um, I do see that I've got pre-commit config YAML. So for some reason, I don't see it here. I'm not gonna worry about it too much more, um, but this is the YAML file, the uh, configuration file, if you will, that tells pre-commit how to do what it's supposed to do. We'll come back to this. Uh, it added that file to the R build ignore file, which is I see here being updated. Very good. Um, and so then it says to edit this pre-commit config file to activate and deactivate what I want to do. We'll come back to that. Um, and it then ran pre-commit auto update to get the latest version of those hooks. And then it added a GitHub action template to my workflows. And so you'll see that has been added here, right? Uh, and let's see, so this should work on pull requests or pushes, uh, and so that should be good. And then it says, it seems like you're using the Roxygenize hook. I believe this is to convert my documentation into those RD files running the, the document function for building a package. And so it says, this requires further editing um, in of your config YAML file. So please run that. So I'll go ahead and run this. Uh, to proceed so we'll go ahead and run that and let's see what it did <laughs> uh, generating the snippet using crayon versions replace the id roxonize key here with the above code all right so let's see in here uh let's see where is id roxygenize i'll go ahead and search there we go right in front of me so this needs to be replaced with all of this. All right, so copy, highlight copy, and I think that should be all in good shape. And now let's go back and save that, and let's look at the different things <laughs> that are in this uh, pre-commit config.yaml file, where we, uh, we see the repo, the pre-commit package repo that comes with some hooks, and these are gonna be R-based hooks, so there's style files using styler, right? So this is going to restyle the files. 
Uh, it's going to run Roxygenize, as we, we already saw. Uh, it's going to use a tidy description, which takes the uh, packages that the my package depends on and is going to make sure they're alphabetized. It runs a spell check um, on um, the files, right? Uh, it runs the linter. It makes sure that the readme RMD file is properly rendered. Parsable.r, uh, make sure that you actually have real R <laughs> code, R script uh, that will work. Uh, let's see that there's no browser statements, no print statements, no debug statements um, in my um, in my code, I suppose. And then it makes sure that all the dependencies that I have in my R code are actually in the description file. And then I think it makes sure that the package down uh, the the website is properly built. All right. And then these are from the pre-commit tool, the tool that we installed using Brew. Uh, and so it's looking to see if I added large files. Um, sorting the contents, I suppose, um, and a file fixer, perhaps if there's like an extra space at the end or things like that. And then finally, uh, it's making sure that I'm not committing common R artifacts. So things like R history, R data, RDS, or RDS, right? Uh, and so then it fails. So many of these things will fail. Some of them will give warnings, I think. Some of them will change the file. Um, we'll just have to see. So let's go ahead and commit the changes that we've made. And I will go ahead then and commit this by saying add pre commit. Maybe I'll put the braces around it to make it make it clear that it's a package uh, functionality to package. Go ahead and commit. One thing I see is that it is going ahead and running that commit hook. Uh, it's giving me information that it's initializing the environment for the pre commit activity. Um, so it's installing all those things that we included. Um, and it's then, yeah, so it's installing and downloading all this stuff. Um, it seems a bit unhappy. Uh, I'm not totally sure what's unhappy about. So it's complaining that package rfast is not available. I'm going to go ahead and close this and try to commit again and see if that doesn't clean things up. That didn't work. <laughs> um, I'll next check uh, my cache. And so maybe I'll go ahead and copy that um, path. I'll go ahead and do nano on that. So looking at that file, um, it seems to be basically the same output that I got earlier. Um, I'm to tell you the truth, I'm not gonna worry too much about this right now. Uh, I'll probably come back and figure it out later. But for now, I'll go ahead and comment this out and um, you might check back my repository and see how I went about fixing this. Um, it, it right now, really what I just wanna be able to illustrate or at least check out is how these um, commit hooks work. So uh, let's go ahead and save that and let's go ahead and recommit it. So I'll close and let's commit. Oh, and it's saying my commit configuration is unstaged. So let's come back. Ah, so I gotta get that checked. So we'll try this again. And so we'll say uh, set up using pre commit to install pre commit hooks. So this ran through pretty quickly and you can see that it, it checked a bunch of my um, hooks, right? Uh, but because there wasn't any R code, nothing really got checked, right? We'll go ahead and close everything and we're all good. All right. So now what we'd like to do is test some of this stuff out, right? So I previously got a issue filed that I had a misspelling in the vignette file, thanks to Rob Hansen. Thank you, Rob. Um, and as you can see, I have an extra E there in classify sequence. So let's go into the vignettes and filotyper RMD. And then let's see if I do S-E-Q-E-U. Yep, right there. So I've got this misspelling. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, just right in here, bump, uh, to say that I bumped it. And so I would hope that a couple things would get triggered. First, uh, perhaps that I have a misspelling. I don't know if it would detect this because that's like a function name. So I'll go ahead and stage that and then let's commit it. And so I'll say bump commit a vignette. And so what we can see is that it failed on the spell check. And so we can see that the following spelling errors were found. Barnesiella, Green Genes, Kamers, Microbiome, Mother, NT, Phylotyper, Porphymodaceae, right? 
So these all look um, pretty good to me. Um, and so it says all spelling errors were found were copied to inst word list, assuming they were not spelling errors and will be ignored in the future, right? Please review the above list. And for each word that is an actual typo, fix it in the source code, remove it again manually from the inst word list to make sure that it's not ignored in the, ignored in the future. Then try committing again. Uh, you can disable this behavior by providing a read only flag. Uh, so that halted the spell check. Okay, so it didn't actually find this as a typo. So I'll go ahead and fix that um, and save. And then let's look at it, this inst uh, word list. Uh, let's see, we can probably need to navigate to it here, right? So that's going to be an inst word list. And these all look good. I just want to double check that I'm not misspelling everything. So I'm happy with that. So I'll go ahead and save um, and I'll say, uh, fix misspelling of uh, classify sequence. Okay, and then we'll commit. Um, it's warning me that there are unstaged files detected, but those don't look unstaged. Let me go ahead and close. I might be getting things a little bit out of order, trying to get too excited to use this thing. So I'll go ahead and stage that and then commit. So I made the commit too quickly. So I'm going to do something here in my terminal. I'll do git reset head tilde. This will basically undo the commit. And if we again do git status, we go back to having what we had before. And if I refresh this, good. Okay, let's go ahead. All right, so we'll go ahead then and commit. And then I'll do run spell checker on vignette. We'll go ahead and commit and see what happens. So all this stuff goes through and seems to have either skipped or passed. Uh, we have the skipped, we have the spell check here that passed, it passed the linter. So we'll go ahead and close that. Very good. Uh, so that's a spell check, right? That's cool. So let's go into the R directory and I'm going to come to kmers.r. So I'm going to go ahead and to test if it's parsable and other issues, I'll go ahead and remove that final curly brace and we'll go ahead and stage that and then we'll commit and I'll then say uh, remove curly brace from end of uh, script. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and do commit. So it didn't finish the commit. So let's come back up to the top and kind of read through what happened here. Uh, something that I don't really like is the the kind of I've got everything zoomed in and so it's really hard to see what's going on here. So it's giving me an error, uh, of course, because I'm missing that curly brace at the end, unexpected end of input. And I'm not sure, um, I guess that's the style files, right? So it's running that hook and it's gagging. <laughs> um, it skipped the stuff for tidy description and the spell check, which is good. When we get into the hook ID for linter, exit code one means it failed. Um, so there's linter problems and it says error kmers.r is not lint free, execution halted. It tells us that file rkmers.r is not parsable, full context. Again, this is the problem we know. Um, so yeah, I think it did a good job of detecting our problem. So let me go ahead uh, and close that. And I will go ahead and add the curly brace at the end. I'll go ahead and save that. And I'm gonna go back to my console into the terminal. And if I do get status, I see that I have um, modified rkmers.r, modified it, right? That I've got changes that have not been staged. So I'll do git add rkmers.r, get status. Uh, everything there looks good. So now I, I fixed that curly brace at the end, right? And so now basically everything went back to the way it was. Maybe what I could do to kind of incorporate a commit with this curly brace would be put a space before it. So I'll go ahead and save that, get status, get add, our uh, kmers.r, get status, okay, get commit, and I'll do uh, bump commit of our kmers.r. And I want to get a sense of what the syntax output looks like while running all these tests. So I like this output from the terminal far better than what I saw in RStudio. Um, this is just, I think, a lot more attractive. 
it tells me style files failed. Um, let's see. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to tell me what the problem is. It failed the linter. Uh, we'll have to go back and see what that means. So it says, yeah, uh, that, let, let's see, uh, line 184, 81. Lines should be no, not more than 80 characters. This line is 81 characters. Okay. Um, and so I see, I have genera, comma, needs to be an integer, not a char. All right. But then all these other things skipped or passed. So let's go to line 184. And where was that? Come back up here. And yep, that char is hanging over the edge. I'm not sure why this didn't cause a problem when I was looking at the linter before. Uh, but let's see, let's go ahead and take this and put this up here and say that uh, genera argument needs to be an integer, not a char. So this is an internal facing function, which is why I don't have uh, all the complicated Roxygen documentation. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then let's go ahead and let's look at our get status. So again, we have modifications to kmers.r that haven't been staged. So I'll do git add that get status, good. And then let's go ahead and do git commit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do um, linting of our kmers.r. That goes through, and I've got an extra uh, quote at the end. So I'll go ahead and, and then I'll, let's copy and paste this without that extra quote mark. So we can see it passed the linter and the styling of the files. And that is great. Um, and so, Everything else seems to have passed. So one thing I'm noticing is that this is not running on all of my files. It's only running on the things that I am committing, right? It's a pre-commit hook, right? And so I think I would probably be, so because I've added this pretty far into the development of the package, I would probably only get things triggered for me um, once I've updated that file, right? And so, that's, that's fine, it's better to start late than not at all, right? And so I think this is another argument for perhaps starting these pre-commit hooks at the beginning of the project, not at the end of the project. I wanna try one other uh, thing, which would be to update my readme.rmd file. And so I think one change that I can make, again, all I wanna do is trigger uh, that pre-commit hook of needing to render the rmd file is to remove the line breaks from my overview. And so again, I'll then do get status. Let's get a little bit more real estate here. And then we'll do git add readme uh, rmd, uh, git commit, and I'll say remove line breaks from overview. Okay, so again, it's going to run. So again, coming back to the top here, we see that the spell check failed. Um, and it found spelling errors in CMD, CodeCov, Rifamonas. Those are all spelled correctly. It then did fail the readme rmd rendered um, test. Good. Um, and so that tells me that I need to go ahead and re-render that, right? And so we'll then come back to our console. So I'll go ahead and do build readme. So that rebuilt the readme.rmd. And I'm not seeing the MD file show up in my staged commits. And I think that's because uh, removing those line breaks didn't really change the markdown file. So if I do ls-lth on readme, um, I see that sure enough, readme.md now is newer than readme.rmd, even if readme.md didn't have any changes as git sees it, okay? Does that make sense? So again, we could do git status. I've already got these staged, so I'll go ahead back up here to my previous commit message, remove line breaks from overview. This should pass, and sure enough, we now see that the readme rmd rendered, passed, and everything else is good to go. One other change that I want to make then is in my GitHub directory, in the workflows, I had linter. I think I can go ahead and get rid of the lint.yaml file, um, and so I'll do, go ahead and do git rm uh, GitHub, and then workflows, lint.yaml, because this pre-commit stuff is going to be running the linter anyway. So I'll go ahead and remove that, and then I'll do git commit, remove uh, linter, gha, uh, because it's in uh, pre-commit. 
So that skipped all of the tests because the change that I made wouldn't have triggered any of these pre-commit hooks, okay? Now I can do a git push. So I'm checking the status of my GitHub Actions here. It's slowly going through these things. Uh, these can take a couple minutes. One thing I'm noticing is that I don't have in here uh, my pre-commit hook workflow. If I come back to uh, my uh, pre-commit YAML file, one thing I notice is that on push, which is what I just did, it's going to ignore the master and the main branch, right? And so if you look at my console here, you'll see I'm on the main branch, right? And you'll see that up here in the upper right as well. And so basically, pre-commit is only going to get run when there is a push from a branch other than master or main. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another branch and then push that up to make a pull request. So I'm gonna click on this little icon here, make a new branch name, I'll say test. I'll go ahead then and create. This then is moving me to a branch called test. I'll come back to kmers.r. And again, I'm modifying the kmers.r that is on the, uh, the test branch, right? So I'm gonna go ahead again and remove that final curly brace to, so it'll throw an error. I'll go ahead and save that because it's not gonna be parsable. And then in my terminal, I'll do git status. And we can see that I've modified our kmers on the test branch. So I'll do git add r kmers.r. Now, if I were to run git commit, it's going to throw an error. So I'm gonna do something special so it doesn't run the, the pre-commit check, right? Uh, so we'll do git commit dash m and make file non-parsable. I don't know if that's, <laughs> the right, I think it's P-A-R-S-A-B-L-E. And then I'm gonna add a flag here to be no hyphen verify. So that committed, again, because we're not verifying. And then I'll go ahead and do a git push. And this should put my test branch up on my uh, GitHub repository. And so now I see that I test has had a recent push two seconds ago. Compare and do a pull request, yes. And so I'll say this should trigger the pre-commit hook check and fail. So we'll go ahead and create the pull request. We see the pull request was created um, and that it now is running some checks. Um, the two at the top here that it's queuing are the pre-commit uh, pull request and the push. Not totally sure why it has both, but probably doesn't really matter. Um, and so I'll be right back once these have run. So I've been sitting here a while waiting for it to go and these pre-commit uh, actions never fired off. Digging around, um, I realized that uh, there's a problem perhaps in the YAML file that it, I think it currently might say Ubuntu-18.04 rather than Ubuntu latest. If I look at my pre-commit YAML, I notice that as the Stack Overflow post indicated perhaps it might be, it does say Ubuntu-18.04, whereas the package down it says Ubuntu latest. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that and something that also occurred to me is that it's probably not the best idea to have all of the builds failing. So I'm gonna make it parsable again. Instead, to trigger the linter, I'll go ahead and remove some of the white space around the, the slash, right? Um, and maybe around this equal sign as well. And maybe I will try to make a really long line here uh, that goes past uh, the 80 character mark. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then in my console, I'm still on the test branch, I'll do git status, and then I'll go ahead and git add uh, the rkmers, the dot github um, workflows, and then the pre-commit yaml, git status, good. And then I will do git commit hyphen m, I'll say make parsable trigger linter. And then I wanna also use that um, the, the flag that I used earlier, which I'm forgetting, uh, but no verify, right? So this hyphen hyphen no verify, and put that in there. That passes, we'll go ahead and push that up. So we see that the first commit, of course, has that X next to it. The second um, is in queue, uh, is running. And now if I look at pre-commit, it is in progress. So that change um, made the difference, right? 
So I'll want to make sure that I make that change to the latest version of Ubuntu rather than the 18.04 in my, um, my YAML file on the main branch. But for now, let's see how this goes and see if it has any problems. It should. So this went through. I see that my commit make parsable trigger linter now has a red X next to it. If I click on the red X, so I see that the pre-commit hooks failed. Um, I don't know why there's two. I'm not gonna worry about that. Go ahead and click on the details here. And what we see is that um, there's a number of changes. Let's come back to the top here to get the whole dialogue. And then we can kind of walk through it perhaps a little bit more sensibly. No, oh, it's come to the very top here. And let's see, it installs everything. Um, we then see that it's actually looking at all of the files, not just the files that I committed, which is interesting. I'm not totally sure I understand what's going on there. Um, but what we see is that um, there's three files that were left unchanged, four that were changed, um, and none were styling through an error. Um, and so it's kind of going through all these files to look for ones that need a change. Um, and so it looks like for the most part, um, it, it changed the files that needed to be changed. The spell check failed, as we've seen before. We have a number of um, bugs in here. Um, I'm not totally gonna be worried about these. These all look pretty good. And we see that it's unhappy with a lot of my code in the benchmarking directory. Again, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Um, and yeah, so there's a variety of other things going on in here. But ultimately what we see is that it's applying the styler to lint the code, to kind of fix the code that it doesn't like in a lot of these places. And I think that's pretty good. I'm not totally sure why it's flagging stuff that I wasn't getting on my local um, computer. Um, really, that's not something I'm gonna worry a lot about just right now because my goal here is to kind of show how we can use these pre-commit hooks. And if somebody's not using pre-commit, on their local computer and they file a pull request, we can still see all the changes here. And so um, I'm pretty happy with this and I'm trying to get to the bottom of, of this whole uh, output of the screen. Again, we can kind of see the changes that the style are imposed, right? So like here it, it put a space around the equal sign that we hadn't had before. Um, and so that's all pretty good. It's updating our spelling list and, and making that comparison for us, okay? So um, again, it failed, <laughs> um, but I think for the most part that the pull request ultimately got to a point where it would have been able to go through. I guess it didn't test this pull request. So what I could do, I think, is if I do like git status, uh, I could do git pull, and it's then pulling down my version, right? So this would be like, I'm a collaborator collaborating on the phylotyper package wanting to make a, a pull request. So now I pulled everything down and I can get the changes and I could uh, perhaps relint the package, right? So I could come into console, I could do like lint our uh, lint uh, package and it'll tell me all the problems, right? Um, and so this is perhaps the one that's left, right? This line 273, which is the one I inserted here, right? So I could go in here and I could go ahead and put that on its own line I could come back to console, relint the package, everything be good, um, come to the terminal, get status, get add, uh, get commit dash M, and then say um, break long line across two lines, okay? Oh, and I went ahead and committed it, um, and it's gonna go ahead and run it through um, all the stuff for me. <laughs> um, and it says again that there was one file changed and everything passed, right? So again, I could go ahead and push this up. I guess it didn't pass. Let's see. Uh, let me rerun that git commit. Unstaged files detected. Uh, that's not good. So I'll go ahead and control C, git status, git add, or what is different? Uh, git diff rkmers.r. So it looks like it moved pattern to the right, right? So before 
I had this, this pattern there, and the, the linter is uh, putting it like there, okay? So the, the styler changed it, which means then that it didn't finish the committing. So again, if I do get status, git add rkmers.r, and then I can go ahead and commit it. So I guess the thing to notice is that if styler changes your code, then you're going to need to go ahead and re um, add the change to the repository. Um, and so it's always good to make sure that you're double checking what Styler does because um, it might impose some changes that you're not you're not really comfortable with or you don't want uh, to do, right? So now uh, we've got everything good to go. We can again do git push. We now see that this commit has made it up onto GitHub. It's gonna go ahead and run these through and I'm pretty confident that it should pass, okay? So I've been learning how to use this pre-commit package and the pre-commit hooks with you. I have never done this before, trust me when I say that. Um, and so if things seem a little bit uh, convoluted as I'm doing this and I, I seem confused, that's because I am, because I'm learning this. And that's really how you learn, right? Is that you, you try to follow the directions. The directions sometimes get a little bit dated, kind of like we did with that Ubuntu uh, version, which reminds me we need to fix that back on our main branch. So I'll do that before we go. Um, but again, you gotta be patient. You gotta do some Googling perhaps, trying to understand what's going on and, and kind of patiently go through things without getting uh, too overly flustered. If something seems weird or seems wrong, uh, then go back and look at that. One of the things I might go back and look at is trying to figure out why the linter didn't freak out before on my local computer with like all that stuff, say, in benchmarking. I'm not totally sure, but I'll go back and check that out. The other thing I'll need to go back and check out is the Roxygen uh, stuff. And so I'm gonna come back here to my, um, to my project. I'm gonna go back into the main branch. So I will go ahead and fix this to be Ubuntu latest, like I had here for package down. And we'll go ahead and fix that. Again, we are on the main branch. Again, if we do get status, I now see, uh, I've got to save that. Get status, get add this. Oh, all right, one too many periods. Get add, get commit, dash M, and then I'll say put on latest version of Ubuntu. So that passed, and we can then go ahead and do a git push, and everything should be up to date. Trust me when I say that we are getting close to the end of developing this package. I think there's only gonna be a few more episodes before we're pushing things up to CRAN, checking off everything on the checklist as we go. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel and you're telling all your friends about what we're doing here on Code Club so they can see the excitement of getting Philotyper up onto CRAN as we uh, process forward here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.